Okay, welcome to our roughness factor calculations. So I'm going to set the pencil here and roughness factor. So the first thing that we need to do, usually you're going to be given this, for example. So that what's in these in the grid here? We have lambda, which is our change in distance. So this is the distance as we go along and how much it goes between each individual point. So we can see every single point going along here. And then we have our z value, which is how much it's going or how much it is changing as it goes. So we can see that or not, it's not how much it's changing. It is the actual like height value that that is recorded. So we can see obviously these are made up numbers so it's pretty rough. So we know that the um, the optimal sampling distance is equal to the average of the wavelength. So with that we can say all right well we've got what do we have here we have all of these values and we can take our average. So this graph is plotting a cumulative distance going from this point all the way to this end. So we have 500 meters that this roughness factor has been, um, or that, that this graph has been developed. So we find that our average lambda value is equal to 33.42. Two, four. So if we were to say this in meters, what it's saying is that with how many points that we have here, which is 10, 10 points, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. with 15 points, the best optimal sampling distance and regular sampling distance is going to be about 33 and a half meters because we're going over 500 meters. So that's a really easy calculation that's delta op. So if, but if we wanted to figure out the roughness factor, the roughness factor is our average z value divided by the average um, wavelength. Now this is supposed to be the change in z as we move along. So I'm going to bring in my Excel table here. I have a lot of stuff going on in this Excel table. I'm going to bring it over here. So my roughness factor here, I have my Z, my lambda, and my distance. So this is everything that we've been looking at. And actually, this is incorrect. So then we need to figure out what the delta Z is. What is the change in height? So at this point, this will be 0. There's no change because it's the beginning point. Then our next value is equal to this minus that. Oh, sorry, I got those backwards. 84 minus 83. And then all the way down. We are going to take the, um, the absolute value of all of these. And then we're going to figure out what the average is. So my average for this and then the, of the absolute values of these. And I didn't like that. Oh, 83 to Let's start with just taking absolute value instead. I'm confusing myself with programming versus using Excel. So <laughs> it doesn't, that's the, the one that it doesn't like. Okay, so we got to do this individually. So absolute. And we're going to say equals this. this value. There we go. Now we can take the absolute of all of these and then we can take the average. There we go. 
So our average is 24, and then our lambda is 33. So going over here, we can take our 24 24.673. We're going to divide that by the 33.424. And we get a value of 0.4. As you are calculating this at the same time, right? Like instead of just sitting there waiting for me, <laughs> this is 0 0.738. So this is unitless. This tells me how rough it is. So this tells me how much is my, my elevation changing compared to my wavelength. Obviously, a one-to-one -one means you're dealing with 45-degree slopes everywhere you go, which are pretty crazy slopes. So... We are a little bit less than that. These are still pretty crazy. You can see how much it bounces around. That's what happens when you do random numbers. So the roughness factor is less than one, which means it's not like super crazy changes, but it's still pretty high. Anything below 0 0.05 generally is like lower slopes, a little bit less rough. This one is relatively rough. So what do we do with this roughness factor? It is used in different applications for um, for calculating, for example, like geomorphology or geological um, applications. There's many other applications for it, but those are the two that kind of stand out in my head. Uh, I used it in geography because I was using it for snow. Um, and so I was looking at the roughness of the snow surface. So it was important there as well. So that these values just give us an indication. They're kind of a like a scale almost in, in one way. They, they scale this information for us to understand, okay, this is how rough the surface is. So that's roughness factor. I know it's a little bit chunky there going back and forth between Excel, but um, that gives you an idea of how to do it in Excel as well as how to um, calculate it throughout and how to graph it and what it looks like.